Okay, let's try this again. Let's get started, shall we? That is much cleaner, and we'll have to take it. Uh, despite the fact there's a little bit of the beginning of the beginning of the beginning. You know what I mean? Um, so we're going to be working on some Monster of the Week monsters tonight, as evidenced by my books. Uh, we actually have music, by the way. Uh, this is by one Bulby. Uh, there will be a link in the show notes. I'm still in Paper Cut's brain. Uh, there will be a link in the description uh, to the playlist that we're playing tonight. Uh, I figure the Kirby remixes is probably enough music. And if we run out of music, I will pick up another. Uh, I will pick up another one. So. Let's hope and pray we don't get uh, obliterated by ads. So we got music. That is... We got some Kirby. Oh, that's way too small. Alright, that's probably fine underneath my voice. I just need a little background voice. I need a little background music tonight, because I'm going to be thinking with my brain. Um, and I, I figured... I, I, I heard of this Bulby person on another stream, and I was like, well, that won't get my pancakes blown up with mine, because I've been known to have that happen, despite the fact that it shouldn't be able to happen uh, previously. Uh, the weird circle got me murked on Twitch. I don't know what the deal was. It's a public domain radio show. You shouldn't be able to do that. But did anyone care? No. I even thought about submitting an appeal about it, and they just didn't even bother. Anyway, so where do we... This is so loud in my ears, I'm sorry. It's beautiful music, by the way. This is a great remix. Oh, that turns it down for you guys. I want to turn it down for me and not for you. This is really good. This is the remix of the Sky Tower, which I've never played Return to Dreamland, so of course it sounds unfamiliar to me, but it's using a lot of Kirby tropes. Um, so we're going to be making a monster tonight. Uh, I've been working on... Uh, ignore my handwriting, by the way. It's, it is a bit difficult to understand. Where am I here? This is... Is this the Rat King? Oh, that's Pitch! forgot about that. That one I actually probably could get away with. Um, monetizing, I mean. I've been thinking about maybe trying to sell these on H.I.O. I'd have to rustle up some art for that, though. Uh, but I digress. We're going to try and design some Monster of the Week threats this evening. Uh, so, context. Let me read you the arc context real quick so that you know what's happening. Let's see, that was Pidge. So here we are. The ARC concept, the group being the party, are visiting the test firing of a new shrink ray, and when the scientist asks for volunteers, the team steps up. Unfortunately, the scientist seems to have miscalibrated the ray, and alongside the team being about mm, golf pencil height, yay big, you know, um, they are flung into the basement of the house through a laundry chute. That's the miscalibration, is it throwing them backwards. Also, I, uh... Oh, uh, hang on. Let me finish my sentence here. They awaken in the basement and have to make their way back up to the attic to return to proper size. I'm debating if they need to get up to the attic or if the laboratory is a little closer to the basement. I'm actually kind of leaning toward, like the lab being on the ground floor, like there's a section that has a basement and there's a section that's like extended to the house, that that's where the lab is because it's like against the ground and that's best. I'm debating, I want to see how much interest there is in the concept before I go going all in on that idea. But regardless, the idea is there are now very short, very small uh, monster hunters who need to hunt monsters while being very small. Uh, and so their their goal is obviously to get unshrunk. And uh, we've got, we've got, well, I'm gonna repurpose two of my other mysteries. Shh, don't tell the team. Uh, 
but I'm gonna I have two mysteries that I've written previously called Sit Trust Me Bro and Pidge, which we might read later in the stream, depending on how much love there is for that. Um We've got and then I've got three more designed called Cyber Rats. Um then we've got uh this is a really good one. I, I love the design of this one. I'm actually a big sucker for it. It's called Primitive Human Nanotechnology. Um, which, I promise that's a good idea. I promise that's a clever name. I know it doesn't seem like one, but it is a very clever name for a monster. Um, then we've got... This one's kind of an eyeball. It's, it's a bit more of like a phenomena style mystery. It's called an offer you can't refuse. And it's essentially like part of the knock on effects of the like giant pile of weird technology that's happening in, um... oh, I recognize this. Oh yes, that is what I think it is. Yeah, no wonder I can hear this. Uh, sorry, the music. Um, I'll probably be commenting on the music because I haven't listened to these playlists before uh, outside of other streamers, but this one's a really good one. It's kind of like a phenomena that is like an effect of an area in the basement because like the scientist has been like dumping a bunch of his failed experiments into the basement like ah, I'll use some of that later, you know, and so it's a really fun concept. Uh, but it's a, it's a little more, like, conceptual and broad-reaching, which is why I kind of wrote it as a phenomena instead of a standard monster. Um, and then last but not least, we have... Where is it? We've got another one here. Or no, I guess Offer You Can't Refuse is the one I'm thinking of. Yeah, uh, Offer You Can't Refuse is the last one I'm thinking of. So... We've got some established NPCs later, and they will definitely come up in, like, the bystanders section. Uh, and I'm using... Uh, I'm using perhaps some recognizable names to the uh, Paper Cuts audience, is what I will say. Um, or if you hear me talk about uh, things I enjoy, you will probably recognize uh, some of this. So, I've got a few more concepts that I'm thinking will work at this scale. Uh, one of them being, uh, essentially sentient dust bunnies. Like, well, I'm gonna say sentient dubiously, dubiously sentient dust bunnies. Uh, dubiously, nope, the meter's wrong. I, for a second I was gonna try and, uh, Ninja Turtles that, but dubiously, dubiously sentient dust I guess dubiously sentient dust works in that meter, but you can't say dust bunnies. I need something other than dubiously. Uh, arguably... Sentient dust... Uh, whatever, it doesn't need to be in Ninja Turtle's brain. Um, so we're gonna open to... Uh, oh, this is the end of session questions, that's why I have that bookmark. Uh, so we're we're writing my Neo Greece. So uh, we'll name this later, but the concept is uh, dust bunnies that are have been sentient the whole time. And I put a star at the start of every mystery so that I can don't lose it in my book here. You cannot see any of the writing I'm doing. Well, you need to be able to see it a little bit. Let me adjust the camera real quick. See if I can get that to happen. Properties. Configure video. Bump the brightness down, maybe? You can't really see... Oh, you can kind of see that I've written there. Um, maybe if I improve the... Uh, listen, that makes me look like I'm in a survival horror game is the problem. Hmm. It's kind of hard to get the... Hang on. This is going to look a little gunky just because of the way I'm zooming it in, but it is definitely fine. Do not worry about it. 
adjusted. That's just fine. I'll take that. Listen, it, it makes me look, makes my hand looks, hands look a little stupid, but it's fine. Um, so we're not gonna name this yet, just yet anyway. Um, so concept. Sentient dust. Bunnies who are territorial block the way upstairs. Gosh dang, this music's bopping. <laughs> Hang on. Oh, I gotta pull it all the way back here to be in shot? Are you sure I can't, like, move the camera? No, I cannot. <laughs> Love that for me. Um, it's fine. Honestly, the hook is bluntly, they are like travel, they are amidst the process of traveling and they're like working their way up the stairs. Cause like, think about it, they're about. Oh, I love this song. This is, okay, this is Gourmet Race. I'm not losing it. Um, cause think about it, they're about yay big, you know? They're about yay big, maybe? Uh, where's my ruler? I just had it today. I just had it out. There it is. So they're about, mm, I'm gonna say comfortably two inches tall, right? Like somebody who is six foot tall is gonna be, I would say, about two inches tall. To get it, to remind you of the scale we're at here. Which I should write that down, speaking of. Go back to the art concept. Uh, yeah, just write that down. Uh, so that's kind of the scale they're at here, right? So, these dust bunnies, like, if you think about a, a small... Like, if you think about how big a dust bunny gets, right? Hang on, I have a perfect scale reference for this. Um somewhere on this desk. Here we go. These are perfect reference for how big I want these dust bunnies to be. Is these little balls of cat fur that I have. So I'm thinking about maybe we give these like a couple different sizes and so they have like kind of a harm range. So let me... Because these are like, these are going to be like what? The size of like a small dog to like the size of about a bear, you know, it, it, like comparatively. Oh my god, there's dust in these. Don't ask why I have all these little balls of cat fur. It's mostly because I'm a hoarder. But uh, anyway, we've got like I'm gonna say we're gonna have like one, two. Uh, we're just, we're gonna say, we're gonna have about four, we're gonna have four sizes available for these dust bunnies. I feel like there's gonna be a really big one. Big boss dust bunny, right? <laughs> Hang on. Text direction readable. What do you do? Oh, it doesn't do anything. It used to like rotate or filter the camera. Hang on. Hang on. 
second. I've, I've noticed something that is bothering me, and now I need to fix it right this exact second, I promise. Where is it? This one. You. Properties. No, that's not what I want. Give me advanced properties. Uh, do I have to click over here? Yeah, advanced audio settings. What, my system audio is delayed? Why is that? There must have been some reason for it. It's not... Let me... That must have been, like, to be in line. Oh, no, that's the sound. Where's the delay? Yeah, why's the mic on that delay? That has to have been the Elgato that that's, that that's on. Five seconds. Okay. That's been bothering me. That's been driving me nuts for the past, look, month in editing, so, you know, thank me for that. So, we've got our four sizes of dust bunnies here. Uh, I think, honestly, again, I think they're, like, they're about two inches high, and, like, the average stair tread, how tall is the average stair tread? How, how tall? The average stair tread? That's a Google question. How tall is the average stair tread? How tall is the standard stair tread? Stair treads have a minimum allowable depth of 11 inches deep so that the stair tread itself should be about yay big. You know, ignore the last inch on this ruler. Um, with the riser heights between four and seven inches. So, I'm gonna say, like, getting up and down the stairs should be inconvenient for them, but not, like, you know, having to rock climb. And they're two inches tall, right? So, I'm gonna say, like, I'm gonna say these are five inch stairs, right? That's inconvenient, like, it's a little over six feet above you, so you're gonna have to, like, you know, throw, like, a grappling hook or something and hook, 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 but it's not, like, completely insurmountable. Like, even if, if they have, like, say, a, a weird science character, like, the mad scientist character, or they have, like, a spell slinger on the team, I could say that they, like, use magic to cast, like, you know, low gravity or whatever. But anyway, hook. As the party is navigating the steps. Let me put the rest of these dust bunnies back. Let me put the rest of these fur balls back so they're not sitting on my desk looking weird. This is for Kirby? Do I know this? Oh, it's from Planet Robobot. That's why I knew it. I haven't played that one yet. Um, so we've got our little size ref here. Oh. oh. I'm so sorry about that sneeze. They run into the dust bunnies. Who I'm gonna say, like, I'm picturing these dust bunnies to have like some kind of static cling power, right? Like they have some kind of control over Marshall the electricity. 
Because, like, if you think about it, a dust bunny is, like, masses of dust, like, household dust that have kind of clung together because they're a little statically charged. So I'm picturing these dust bunnies as being, like, being able to just and, like, shoot a little, like, electrostatic ball or something. And so I think, like, the dust bunnies, like, see the party coming and they're like, oh no, these are our stairs. And they, like, buzz out them, you know? Honestly, I would almost say, uh... Honestly, yeah, I think the, the, like, the bunnies are going to literally repel them, maybe with, like, a, like, a little bubble or something. They're gonna go doink off, and then they have to, like, the, the, the big thing they need to do is find a way through the barrier without distracting, like, without attracting the bunny's attention, or while attracting the bunny's attention without, you know, getting murked. So, getting exploded. Dust bunnies is, uh, electro fence, right? Which repels them. Oh no. Um, I don't even know, like, that's the thing that I was, like, unsure about coming on, like, as soon as I turned on the camera, I'm like, what is the countdown for this mystery? What is the monster count? Because immediately, like, my immediate thought when I was right when I was about to write this initially would be, like, a beast, you know? Uh, the monster types for context. Uh, by standard threat moves, monster threat moves. These are moves. This is what I want. By standard types, minion types, monster types. So monster types, right? My immediate thought was a. Uh, my immediate thought was kind of like a sort of like beastly, like you know, untalkable dust bunny like these bunnies are feral and they don't want anyone anywhere near though it's like how very dare you be here but like i'm almost tempted to run them more as a queen as in to possess and control their area right it's like they want to have control over the stairs so that only they can control who's coming in and out, but also, honestly, I almost wonder if we should have the barrier be, like, if we were to go for a phenomena, uh, approach, right, we could do a bubble to keep inside things inside and outside things outside, right, and have the bunnies themselves be more of a, uh, like, more of a brute that is, like, a minion for the, uh... Um, have the bunnies themselves still be kind of, like, beastly and minion-like? You know, they're big, like, you know, they're big and brutish and scary. Like, if you're picturing somebody who's two inches tall, right? I need something that's, like, two inches at scale, right? Because, like, think about how big this thing is. This is, like, what? This is, like, a good, like, two and a half inches big, if not bigger. So, like, this is the size of a person or larger, and it's, like, a large hunk of, like, you know, dust that's like you can see what it's made out of and that's kind of gross and it's like scary but again i'm almost like i'm almost wondering if this is like best done as a phenomena mystery and have the bunnies be uh have the bunnies be like a minion because like ostensibly the effect here is you can't go upstairs the bunnies are stopping right like this is meant to be kind of like a 
it's kind of meant to be like a a pretty like late in the game process or like kind of around like depending on how much of this house that i want to have them travel through this is kind of like a you know final third area broadly uh, this is like in the final third so like i kind of want this to be like a more complex like difficult thing for them to undo and i'm kind of debating whether i want this to be like kind of a like a sort of so there's this thing in one of the in the one of the new books uh the codex of worlds right where in one of the settings you can have phenomena have tenacity like they want to stick around really bad and i'm almost tempted to make this like a portal keep inside things inside outside things outside in the sense of keep the basement things in the basement separate from the whole society of what's happening on the ground floor. Uh, and have it be, like, really tenacious and difficult to do. Like, they need to make multiple runs at it. You know what I mean? I don't know. I'm debating. Because, like, again, there's, like... If we, if we want to take it with the, like, oh, you, you gotta... You gotta break down the barrier, uh, then the phenomena is more apt. I have no idea what I'm gonna be the- what I have to be- the countdown is. Usually I have a pretty good idea of a countdown when I'm coming into writing a mystery. Like, it's the first thing after the hook that I think of. But I'm not really sure this time. Cause like, other than the queen to possess- to possess and control um, really, uh, there's not really any other motivations that suit what I have in mind here. Although it'd be interesting to write this in another, like, in another, from another angle, right? Like, what, what would it take for the Dust Bunnies to be beasts, right? They want to run wild, they want to destroy, they want to kill. Like... Honestly, that would make the hook very different. Like, it would seem that they are getting, like, preyed upon as they're climbing. Like, they stop for the night, right? Maybe. And, like, then one of the NPCs they brought along, if they brought an NPC along, like, they get got. You know? Kind of like, you know, a ghostly hand rises out of the murk. Uh, and shoop, grabs them. Um, which I don't hate, actually. I think it would, I think it would work just as well as the, uh... Yeah, I think I'm gonna do that instead. The problem is I don't have a way to erase this. I might ask Raz for an eraser. <laughs> oh, we're out of music already. Uh, let me grab a little more then. No, don't, no, don't start Planet Popstar yet. It's very good, but I'm okay. Uh, show me this person's YouTube channel again. Show me their playlists. Do I have, like, a larger remix playlist I can use here? Ooh, Ace Attorney. Ace Attorney would be a good one. There's a lot of Mega Man music. You know, let's go for the Mega Man music. You know what? I lied. Uh, Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3. It's fine. Yeah, again, there will be a link to Bulby in the show notes, because this slaps. Um. Alright, decision time. 50-50. Do I want to go to the trouble of writing this as like a beast that is slowly picking off people in the party? Or do I want to go for a phenomena? Because like a phenomena, to me feels like a much harder mystery to solve, right? Because it just keeps happening until you find the way to undo it. And, like, narratively finding a way to undo it is kind of a process, right? Because, like, Portal, uh... Yeah, like, Bubble would work really well in that manner. But I'm just so tempted... Like, I was coming into this with the picture of these dust bunnies being, like, 
scary predatory I predatory things. Um, you know what? We could still work with the existing book. So the group makes so the group makes camp for the night, right? And we're just like, what do we do? Um, but then that kind of like that kind of has me reach in and like be your character does this, which I don't love. Hang on a sec. I'm gonna ask Raz if I could borrow an eraser. Nobody explode. Don't be right back on this scene. No, I don't. <laughs> Nobody explode. I'm gonna grab an eraser from off screen. Enjoy the music, I'll be right back. Okay, gang. Raz, Raz has pitched an incredible, incredible concept. Hang on, I thought I heard a wait. Huh? Okay. 
Raz has pitched an incredible idea that really settles this being more of a, like, more of a, like, beast threat by pitching a really good hook. Which is, instead of the party being stopped by some sort of mysterious barrier, they've heard tell of like, yeah, there's territorial dust bunnies somewhere in this area, and there's like a big red circle on the map, right? And it includes the stairs, but underneath the stairs are the washer and dryer. And so like, the party is trying to climb the stairs and the dryer turns on and zoom, you know? And in the rumbling of the earth, uh, come these dust bunnies because they're like, no, we know you're here. Territory. And like the dust bunnies are all worked up because of the dryer being on, right? I like that a whole ton. And so like then we could have like a like a custom move, right? For the dust bunnies where they get extra power when the when the dryer is on, right? And like I'm picturing like this because this is like a you know, stereotypical eighties movie mad scientist. Um he's got it like automated, right? <laughs> Um, you know what Final Fantasy music next? I'm just gonna open these in multiple tabs real quick. Nobody panic. I wonder if I could use, um, oh, there's another, like, uh, there's another person that I'm, I, like, know their music and it's really good. And I don't know if I can use their stuff or not. Uh, I'll look into that after stream. Anyway. So, the hook is they're navigating up. They hear the scientist. The scientist's automated dryer. Set up. Kick on. And they have to like, you have to like stop, right? Cause like the whole floor is rumbling. Cause the dryer's like, and they're swamped. Causing a quake. And the bunnies riled up by the static. Appear and make a threat since we're in their territory. Which is beautiful. One hundred out of a hundred, uh, Like, and it gives me such a good, like, clear line to draw on the, like, uh, on the countdown, too, right? Which is, I think, is the next step. It's usually the next step. I actually might not even need to open the book for it. Uh, that one starts with threats, but I didn't really... Tried very hard not to sneeze. Mm. Yeah, uh, countdown is next. So, countdown.
Uh, so, first of all, I've been writing these countdowns with the wrong version of the countdown timer. Uh, so, funny thing about Monster of the Week is in the original printing, like this, the soft cover printing, uh, they got dusk and sh they got dusk and sunset backwards. I think. Yeah, it says in Tomb of Mysteries, right? They like correct it. Uh, yeah, sunset and dusk are backwards, and I've been writing mysteries with sunset and dusk backwards for years now, <laughs> and I didn't even think about it. So we got countdown. That's the yeast. Countdown dead. The party. The party supplies are ravaged. Presumably. by bunny-based raids. Uh, and then that brings us to... Hang on, I'm just gonna open the mystery time over here. Here's the errata... Here it is. Page 30. I wish I had something to hold this open with a little bit more elegantly than I'm doing right now. Just kind of trying to balance my books, as it were. Stay. Thank you. Shadows. So obviously they, like, rattle all their supplies to try and get them to go go and leave and go like resupply somewhere um after that what are they gonna do to threaten them more though I think honestly if there if there are any NPCs along one of them gets like kidnapped as extortion yeah if any NPCs One might be kidnapped. And he's threatened. Uh, and then Sunset, I feel like they carry out that threat, right? The bunnies start showing evidence of their threat, right? Of their threat being carried out. Uh, by dusk, I think, uh, I think the, the dryer kicks on again, right? By dusk. And I think the dust bunny is emboldened by this, uh, actually attempt to kidnap a hunter. I think either they try to kidnap a hunter, or, um, 
or they like, you know, kill an NPC. I'm debating, because, like, I mean, they've already been, like, extortioned by the, yeah, the bunnies emboldened, like, kill the NPC, I think. And, like, for context, the, uh, the countdowns are designed to be, what if the hunters just did absolutely nothing? What if the hunters, like, right after hearing about the threat, were all, like, clouded on the head, and then just everything progressed without them? You know, what if they got souped, and they got, you know, scooped up and thrown into a different campaign? What happens to the world without them? So this is what I'm picturing, is, like... The Dust Bunnies are like, all right, fine, if you're not going to leave, you know? Um, and then Nightfall, I think, is, like, the Dust Bunnies are threatening to do something to, like, people outside their territory. Like, they're threatening to upend, like, a peace treaty or something. Like, maybe they had a peace treaty with the, uh, like, the traveling settlement of, you know, door-to-door -door salesman, which is a thing in this world, by the way. Yeah, I like that a lot, actually. I'm gonna, I'm gonna rope the salesman into this. Um, Nightfall. The Dust Bunnies. Threaten. To abandon. Talks like the peace treaty they have with the sale with the salesman. I think it, at nightfall, they start allying with, like, other monsters that have come up in the process of, like... At midnight, I think they start, like, allying with other monsters or other, like, forces in the basement to, like, start doing a crusade, basically. Like, doing, you know, imperialism, teeny tiny imperialism on the on the basement, uh, and that really depends on what the party has, like, has and has not killed, has placated versus what they've killed in the process of doing this, which, like, honestly, given the, like, t overall tone of this setting, I actually want to be, like, I, I want to kind of have death be a bit of a rarity, like, somebody might, like, go crazy, in the, in, like, in the sense of, like, a, like, a teenager's cartoon, right, like, it's very serious when someone actually dies. Like, sure, they could, you know, experience psychological torture forever, or, like, go get sent to the Shadow Realm, or, like, completely go crazy and go live in the wilds, or, like, you know, things that are very serious, but they're not dead. And so, like, that's kind of why I'm putting, like, death so low on the, um, on these countdowns is I don't want it to be, like, a thing that I just kind of toss out, you know? But if the players are open to a more serious tone with this, like, I'm kind of taking it half seriously, right? Like, I'm taking it a little more seriously than they would in, like, Honey, I Shrunk the Kids, but not so serious that it's, like, 90s mouthful of gravel, you know? The premise is not strong enough to hold up to being that serious. Like, in my opinion, you gotta have, you gotta have something that's just rock solid, like, very serious business as a premise, if you're going to then have it be very totally serious. It's kind of hard to be at odds 
tonally with the premise in comparison to the story being told. It's not that it can't be done well. I mean, look at Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles for crying out loud. That was a that was a Daredevil parody that took itself very seriously for a long time, but like I feel like you gotta you gotta make some concessions for the fact that we're all improvising. We're not writing any of this beyond like what what monsters are happening. I'm not writing much for this. You know, I might write I might like build out what the shape of the basement looks like. Which I might need some scrap paper for that. I'll find something. Um Cause that might be something we get we start digging into tonight is trying to build out the actual, like, setting rules for the basement itself. How much- how long have we been streaming? OBS is not telling me tonight, which is concerning. Usually it tells me. Oh, yeah, we've been going that long? Yeah, it's fine. Um, anyway, uh, Midnight is there, like, allying with a previously, like, another force in the basement, like the, like the, well, not like the salesman, um, like the glutenites, I think that's what they're called, what are they called? The carbo something or other? There's a cult in the setting whose name escapes me. It's, ah, uh, glutenia. The, the glutenia, uh, the glutenians, the glutenites, I'm gonna call them glutenites. Uh, the Glutenites, maybe, uh, could be someone here, or, like, uh, like I said, not the salesmen, but maybe some of the knock-on effects from the thing where the salesmen are focused could be a thing. Like, the, the, the mystery there is, like, someone has been experimenting with the weird tech that the, uh, the scientist has been dumping in the basement, and he's created... He's taken a brainwashing experiment the scientist did and created, like, basically a child super soldier. It's... It's a concept. I'm explaining it much more seriously than it's actually taken in fiction. Promise. Um, but, like, that... Depending on how that's handled, something like that could come up. You know, that could be the thing that the dust bunnies are like, you're strong, let's go conquer you know so i'm just gonna say pretty ambiguously the dust bunnies make allies and begin conquering yeah the dust bunnies prepare for conquering As a conquering force. <laughs> um, while we're at an interim here, uh, I would like to remind you that we have done this before. We've done this exact thing before. We've designed Monster of the Week monsters and phenomena uh, on the show before. We've, uh, and if you want to go check out how that went last time, uh, I would heartily suggest going and checking out the YouTube channel where all the VODs live. Uh, it's, it's a great spot, actually. I, I really kind of like how it's kind of come together, you know. I, I occasionally grumble and mumble about, uh, how I wish I could put certain, uh, certain projects uh, a little closer to the front burner, but, you know, it's all fun. There's all sorts of fun VODs. Uh, the VODs come up on uh, Saturdays, usually around 12 and 6 p.m. my time. Or, actually, it might go off the system time, so it might still be central, because, confusingly, my computer is on central time. Um, I've got some actually like, fun scripted content uh, in the pipeline. Uh, I've got, I've got actually a couple scripts done for, uh, for a fun project that actually kind of unpacks what I was doing in the RV a little bit. 
I just need to sit down and film them. And uh, filming them is going to be a little bit of a process because of the way I want to do a couple things. But there's more coming to the YouTube than just bots, promise. Alright, there's two lines left on this page, um, and we have much more mystery to mystery here. Uh, so we're gonna call, we're gonna say that, like, the main big dust bunny, like, I think, I'm liking the idea that these dust bunnies can, like, merge into one another to become larger, and, like, the biggest dust bunny, this big, like, bear-sized dust bunny, well, relatively, right, is kind of, like, their the king of the dust bunnies, or like the re- I, I wanna go with regent of the dust bunnies. These dust bunnies don't need to have gender. They're piles of dust. <laughs> um, but like the, the, the dust bunnies like, I say clan leader, but like, yeah, the dust bunnies regent, I think is going to be like a main, like, it's a beast, and like it is barely contained by its followers, right? So I think I think threats is where we are where we are in the monster building process here. Yeah, we've already done the we've already done the hook, so we've got the countdown. So now we got threats, and that's the monster. So threats. Yeah, I'm just gonna not use the bottom line of that page. Uh, and we're just gonna have threats start up here. We're gonna say the Dust Bunny Regent. Uh, it is a monster type. Um, what type do we want to give this beastie? I almost want to give like the the Regent of the Dust Bunnies more of a like nuanced type than beast and then have like the little dust bunnies be like brutes brood is a minion type we'll get to it later um you'll have to excuse the camera blinking on and off like that that's very strange i won't gesture with the book anymore uh, my apologies if that's troublesome for you i think um i almost want to run it as a sorcerer in the sense of this thing is usurping the unnatural power that the dryer is giving it. Like, this dust bunny, by virtue of its size, and like, perhaps this is the biggest dust bunny, like, the biggest unmerged dust bunny, and so by virtue of its size, it, it is most, it has the most surface area to access, like, extra power from the dryer going off right um and so I, yeah i think i want to run it as a sorcerer so we're gonna say monster sorcerer usurp unnatural power so then it is usurping the power of, like, it is taking on too much power from the, uh, from the dryer, and is just kind of going a little batty. The biggest individual dust book. who is high on the heady, uh, the heady waves of it power. Put off by the nearby, uh, by the nearby dryer. Takes slights poorly, obviously. A uh, very. The 
source of the territoriality. Subjects It takes slights portal. Slights even imagine set. health to this thing because normally you can have a you can have a monster usually have from 7 to 14 health i'm picturing like this is like a big like monstrous like bear sized thing like it's it's probably like if you're picturing like how big this would be right if you're thinking about it in comparison to like someone that is two inches tall like this thing's already almost like two inches on its own. So like this is big. Like this is like in scale like six feet or more big. So I feel like that gives it a lot of health, right? You know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna lean on the fact that it can take on power from the dryer, right? And I'm gonna say it has a how much harm would like a bear have? Thing. Like, if you're thinking about, like, a normal bear, because a gun does, like, three harm. So, like, most people, like, most even, like, untrained hunters could probably take down a bear in two, maybe three shots, depending on if it's charging at you. So that gives us, like, eight or nine health. So I'm going to say it has, uh, let's say, eight harm. And then it gains harm when the dryer is on. Uh, I'm gonna say it has one armor just because of, like natural, like it cling. It has like some static cling, right? A arm, one armor. Which can be. much higher with the dryer on. Okay, so we need powers for this guy. Uh, I'm thinking about, like, it's, it's a dust bunny, right? So it's gotta have, like, big, my immediate thought is it's a bunny. It's gotta have big, strong legs. So I'm gonna give it, like, a I'm thinking about, like, let me remind myself how much harm things are. Index, please. Uh, harm. Very right, Dresden. Harm. Monsters and 110. Yeah, zero harm wounds have minor short-term effects. Four to seven harm wounds are serious and unstable. Well, that's not quite a lot. Two to four perhaps. Also, this is really good, the music playing. Yeah, uh, one harm or more, fall down, maybe take minus one ongoing, intense pain. Uh, eight harm out and out kills a guy. <laughs> Uh, I'm gonna give the kick two harm, right? That's a, that's a good initial like smaller attack to throw at a throw at a hunter. So, uh, how have I been organizing the moves here? Yeah, powers. This is like a subheading under the dust bunny. Uh, so, it has a two harm, a blunt, close, uh, 
kick. I want to say Titanic kick. Because it's like it's got big, beefy legs. It's a big, big bear sized bunny. And so it'll like boom. And you're like, oh, oh. you know? You kind of like have to take a minute to make sure you're not going to cough up any blood if you get kicked in the ribs. You know? It's like this is, this is like a big Titanic punch. You know? If he gets you in the head with it, it's not going to be pretty. Um, I feel like it needs to have some kind of, like, I'm debating whether it has a move to, like, boost its armor, or if it can use its, actually, I'm gonna say it can use the static both ways, right? It can, like, see an attack is coming and, like, pull, like, a, like almost like a cape of uh, electricity over itself to, like, add itself one armor. Like, as a reaction. Like, instead of, like, attacking you, you know? That can be a move that it uses when it, when it gets, uh, you know, attacked. Which, for context, the attack move in Monster of the Week is kick some ass. So when this thing is getting its ass kicked, uh, it might just be able to be like, Nope, swoose, I don't take damage. Zero harm. Plus one armor. Uh, electric... Um, static. Let's just call it static shield. Um, and I think in the same way it kind of has like a big like static, like a static ball that it can throw at you, like a ball lightning. I'm gonna say static. Like if you get hit with a piece of ball lightning, that's probably enough to, to make you like have to go to a hospital to make sure your organs are in check, right? Because, like, that's four harm is enough to make you go, like, oh, I need a hospital. Or, like, I need first aid so I don't start bleeding internally. Um. Yeah, I'm gonna give it the ball lightning with, uh, four harm. And don't worry, I'm hoping to have a Chosen on the team for these big swings uh, so that someone doesn't just get, like, half their health obliterated and they're like, I'm super dying right now. Ouch. You know. But you also gotta remember that uh, one of the effects of Kicks and Ass is reduce the harm that is coming into you and you can, like, have armor. So, it's not gonna... It's probably not gonna kill them. It's not gonna take them out. It'll be fine. It'll definitely be fine. I've never balanced the Monster of the Week monster poorly before. For harm, uh, do we want to make it Life Drain? I think Life Drain's a little too busted. L Life Drain doesn't... Life Drain doesn't, uh... It doesn't track for this, I think. It's throwing a ball of lightning at you. Maybe it has, like, a lighter lightning attack that it can kind of, like vampire some energy out of you? Am I given anything else lifesteal lately? Because, <laughs> like, I feel like I've been using lifesteal as a tag a lot. Uh, let's look here. We got a freeze ray, we got a disintegrator, we got jet boots, we got net cow trips. Um... What else do we have? We got a guy with a ton of guns. That's his whole shtick. Um... We got, a, we got the fire breath, we got the teleportation, we got the telepathy. Oh, interesting. This doesn't have any life steal. Does. Does the yeast have life steal? Is that what I'm thinking of? Yeah, the yeast has life steal. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking of. Is it has that has that. Oh yeah, and then that has the stacking tag, so that'll do a bunch of damage. Yeah. I've had the stacking tag come up in another mystery I wrote where it was in a setting where a thrift store is constantly spitting out weird like effects into the world or like monsters into the world. And one of the monsters was a like you know how you've got those little pellets that like are little sponges and they grow into a big thing? Uh, the concept was it was a vampire 
that was made out of that. And so it had a stacking attack where if it got a hold of you and it started to draw your moisture out of you, this is a sponge, it's thirsty, um, it would do one harm initially, then two harm if it keeps holding you, then three harm if it keeps holding you more, then five harm if it keeps holding you more, and so on and so forth. I think it was actually one, two, two ignore armor, three ignore armor, five, five ignore armor. So, that's what the stacking tag means. If I ever apply stacking to something on stream, that's what I mean. So I don't think the ball lightning is going to have life drain or the ball lightning is going to have stacking. I think I want to have life drain be more of the yeast, uh, the yeast's purview. I don't think it makes sense to give this guy life drain. Uh, obviously this is electric. I think it's, uh... I'm gonna call this near. Like, the ball lightning disperses after, I would say, maybe six to ten seconds of running. You know, it's you can be nearby and it can still throw it at you, but over time it will out, you know? So I'm gonna call this near... Electric... Um... Near electric... What's the tag for the Spellslinger's Ball ability? Hang on. I tend to reference the Spellslinger's uh, spells a lot for um, for monster abilities because it's like the it has such a good like set of tags for like weird or magical items. Uh, magical, close, obvious, loud. I'm gonna call it. Yeah, we're gonna say near rather than close, so it gets a little farther. I'm gonna say, uh, yeah, obvious I feel like works. Uh, messy. Messy is the tag I was looking for. Messy, obvious. Messy meaning it, like, it, it makes a huge mess when it hits a something with blood, basically. Like, if you throw it, if you were to throw this at a person, it's gonna, like, make a big, like, cloud of terrible flesh-smelling smoke, or, like, it's gonna make somebody go, and, like, cough up blood. Like, it's gonna make a big mess. It's not gonna be... It's gonna be, like, a problem. It's going to be very visibly a problem very quickly. I wanna say obvious. Because if you see a ball of lightning coming at you, you're gonna want to get out of the way. You're not gonna go, what? Is that ball lightning? Like, unless you are rolling, like, full, like, sixes or less, you're not gonna just gawk at it and go, is that ball lightning? I didn't know we could make ball lightning. You know? Um, I feel like this guy needs one more attack. I don't know. I tend to give my monsters, like, a lot of attack options. I feel like maybe just the ability to order around other smaller dust bunnies. You know what? No, we alluded to this. The dust bunnies can, like, consume one another to become larger. I think consume an underling to heal works. And I think there's gonna be a broader custom move that involves the, like, the dryer, because it'll affect not just the big dust bunny region, but all the other smaller dust bunnies, too. So we'll write that custom move after we write the other dust bunnies. I feel like the dust bunnies definitely need, like, allies to have another minion. I almost wonder if, like, the dust bunnies have allies from, like, somewhere upstairs that they don't want to call in. They really don't want to call in. But they can, like, be like, hey... Uh, you didn't want anyone coming upstairs, right? And they're like, yes. And they're like, well, we need help. So I feel like that's another good minion to add here. And they will definitely hesitate to call the man. But anyway, uh, I'm going to say... Uh, two heals, maybe? Uh, two points of healing? I mean, it would get rid of a minion that's actively causing trouble in a fight, right? Um, actually, do we have anything that's, like, in the, in the current, 
book that's like, yeah, it eats its minion and it develops... Uh, it develops more health. Boom, 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 boom. Werewolf, the identifier. Wasting disease thing. Vampire is probably what I was thinking. Um, I mean, yeah, I'm just gonna say it heals a given amount of harm. It like takes in rather than writing it harm first. I'm gonna say, uh, fusion. I think fusion is actually gonna be like a custom move available to uh Yeah, I think fusion's gonna be available to the dust bunnies at large. Uh but it's gonna be less effective for the minion bunnies than it is for the regen. At the cost of one minion who is absorb the regent can gain I'm gonna say two health Right? It, like, takes a- it takes another threat off the board, which could be a huge deal in a, like, active fight, to harm to health, I should say. Oh, why have we stopped? Yeah, yes, continue watching. Thank you. Uh, regain two health. Uh, and get a little bigger. And I think for the, uh, I think for the region, it also, like, it, I, sh I feel like it should have an additional effect. Um, I feel like maybe, because, like, I wanted to do one health for one. Uh, like, I'm thinking for smaller dust bunnies, it only heals them one health, and it only, like, it doesn't do the additional effect, but because the region is, like, big and important it gets an additional effect. Um, honestly, I'm almost tempted to give it like a temporary plus one harm to its electric attacks. I like that actually, I like that a lot. Uh, temporary plus one boost to its electric moves. Electric moves from additional surface area. So like, for like a turn or two, it could deal five harm with the ball lightning, or gain two armor instead of one armor. Um. But only for like one, like one or two moments, right? Like if if the hunters are like, oh no, and they just kind of like stare at it, or like 
they deliberately avoid interacting with it, the the buff disappears and they just have the extra health. I, I like that a lot, actually. And then, like, the small dust bunnies just get one health and they don't get the additional, like, attack boost. I like that a lot, actually. Um... Alright, we got tiny dust bunnies. Uh, dust bunnies... Tiny dust bunnies, I think, are minions' brutes. Uh, unless there's another really good minion tag for that. Um... Location we'll get to later. Bystander we'll get to later. Um... Minion types. Assassin, Brute, Cultist, Guardian, Right Hand, Plague, Renfield, Scout, Thief, or Traitor. Um... Yeah, I think Brute is the most uh, appropriate here for these small dust bunnies. They're just angry and mad and want to kick bamboo slime punch stuff. So, dust the dust bunnies, Brutes. Other dust bunnies. Minion. to attack and what's the other motivation for the brute? Hang on, hang on. Let me scroll right past the thing I need here. Yeah, to attack and intimidate. So they're just big and they're burly and they're bad and they're annoying. So we're gonna they have... Uh, I'm gonna say they can have a much lower starting harm track, right? Because they're little. Like, I'm gonna say they have, like, a range of harm, because there's three different ranges of these little guys. You know what? I'm gonna say, actually, it gets... The, the regent regains a range of health. I'm gonna say one to three health based on the size of a... One to three health, and based on the size of the dust bunny, right? And this this has eight harm. I feel like it could range from like one, two, three, four. Uh, I think two harm's a little too low. I think I'm gonna say range from three harm to uh. I think is this like yeah, that's about half the size of a person. So I'm gonna say like uh, three harm to maybe six harm. Three to six harm. Uh, zero or one armor. On the sheer size. From like this this guy right is like pretty small I'm gonna say like the size of like a small dog maybe because like if you think about this is like the size of a whole person this is like an ankle biter dog like an actual bunny Size to I wanna say like about it like the size of a large dog. You know? Maybe like a maybe like a teenager. an ad ramp there. Sorry. Um. Uh. Yeah. These these other dust bunnies can range in uh range in size from about the size of like an actual bunny to the size of like a, a golden retriever or like a small or like a you know good sized teenage boy. <laughs> um. 
and so they have a range of health from three to six harm. They've got either no or one armor, depending on their size. The bigger they are, the more likely they are to, they are to have one armor, right? Um, they also have like a they have like a little kick, right? I'm gonna say depending on size, zero or one harm. Uh, but it's it's a little stunning, right? You're like especially with like a small bunny, you're like that hurt more than it should have. Um, zero to one harm, uh, blunt, close, uh, stunning. I think actually they don't have, like, I'm gonna say they don't have the shield, and like, they have a much smaller ball lightning, and like, they leech a little electricity in their kicks. Electric. Uh, yeah, electric. And then I'm just gonna say, I'm just gonna say that's, that's a kick. Uh, let's say static kick, right? Um, and then it's not gonna, none, none of them are gonna be able to, like, shield themselves. I think that's, that's very much a big boss type thing. Um, and then I think they're gonna have, like, a little, like, two-harm, like, lightning bolt. Uh, I'm gonna say, yeah, near, near electric... say like loud i feel like it's loud like it's like it's you know like a little thunder clap after uh yeah it's a lightning bolt um and you're thinking you're you're looking at me i can hear it and you're thinking, what? This is like no harm. Why? Why does your boss have so little harm to do? Well, it's gonna get a boost when the dryer's on. That's the whole point. Um, this is some fantasy. Oh, uh, I think this just has like a kick, a punch kick, and then it has the lightning, which will do one to two harm depending on size, and then fusion. Uh, as regent, but one health. No plus one. Uh, I feel like I want to have, like, one more thing that's, like, potentially if one of the minions from the upstairs comes in. Uh, I want to say I'm kind of tempted to do, like, kind of a robot-looking enemy and do, like, oh, it's the tin toys, you know? Like, the like I'm picturing the weird scientist as, like, he's got, like, a small collection of tin toys that, like, live in little glass domes upstairs and they're like this glass dome is mine this is my space you can't be anywhere near it so they're also a little territorial and they're like i don't want any of these weirdos coming up from the basement and sullying my resale value and so like there are these tin toys that are like collector's items right i like that a lot Uh, is Brew appropriate here? I feel like maybe we we need another minion type, huh? Let's 
Sanders minions. Um, I feel like right hand, obviously. They're backing up all the monsters. from upstairs. I'm gonna say tense allies, hesitant allies from upstairs. They don't want the weird, they don't want the weird stuff in quotes. Downstairs to sully their collector value. The tin toys, I feel like, like I said, they're also... Yeah, I'm gonna add that as description. They are also... Territorial. But... About... Their... Individual... Displays upstairs, right? Like they don't, they don't want any weird stuff coming up from the basement, ruining their collector's value. They don't want the little kid from across the street throw a baseball through the window and break Jimmy, who's like, you know, the most famous tin toy of his time in mint condition or whatever. Um, you know, that kind of thing. Um... I'm so hungry. <laughs> I'm sorry, I was like, I'm sitting here and I'm smelling whatever Raz is cooking. I know, it's just, it's gyudon, I'm very excited about it. I'm smelling this gyudon and I'm like, I'm so hungry. Tell you what. I know it's been like only an hour 30, and we normally go for two hours on uh, nights like this. But I got started, uh, I got started a little late because I had a bunch of setup to do. Uh, let's leave it off on the introduction of these tin toys, and I will, uh, work on some of this off stream. And, uh, you know, thanks for tuning in, everybody. I, I had a really great time doing this. Raz coming in with the just absolute Hail Mary save on that hook, by the way. I had... You know what? Actually, uh, I'm gonna fill a little more time. I'm very hungry. Uh, and I'm gonna leave this off mid finishedness. I'm actually gonna read uh, some of the other mysteries we've got here. Um, so, for example, because I've been alluding to them all night, and I want to make sure they're, like, a little sensible. I want to kind of read you into the into the setting, as it were. So uh, we've got. Let's start with the Rat King because it's because uh, it's the it's one of the first ones I wrote for the setting. So we got Cyber Rats. The uh, concept being a horde of nanobot enhanced rats driven a bit mad by conflicting commands from the scientists. They want revenge on humanity at large, and all these little humans are here, and they're like, mm, well, perfect opportunity for revenge. I got a couple book options, depending on when this is placed, because I was going to put a few of these mysteries in front of the group, like, hey, uh, pick one of these. <laughs> you know, kind of have it be a little bit of a branching path, path situation. Those options being uh, 
The rats have been raiding Nottenburg, the village the group awakened in. Or a favorite NPC has been kidnapped uh, to be used as ransom against the party to extort them into uh, unshrinking the rats when they uh, escape. You know, when the people escape, the, the rats are getting a extorted promise from them, like, you will unshrink us and then we can get our revenge on humanity. Uh, I'll skip over the countdown, but uh, the main threat is the Rat King, a trickster who uh, who can, like, cast holograms with his nanites, right? Because he's been, like, injected uh, with these nano machines, and so he can, like, produce illusions with a holographic screen, or uh, he's because he's, like, a Rat King, he's got, like, a bunch of smaller rats, like, attached to his tail, you know, that's what a Rat King is. And so we can use his subjects sacrificially to block uh, hits. Or, uh, you know, he's he's a big rat, so he can bite you and it could be poisonous because the rat's not, like, you know, it's got bacteria in its mouth. Um, or, even more fun, it can summon little, like, fleas that are loaded with nanites from eating his blood. Uh, which will come back to the fleas. It's basically that's just summon a minion is that move. Um, which then we've got the other rats named the pie rats. Uh, they intend to just like steal things to like build up the rat king's hoard. They're kind of scared of the rat king. They're doing it because they think the rat king will like unleash some si some sort of horrible like magic upon them because like the rat king kind of like illusory did some things to convince them that he has much more power than he does so the rats are kind of scared of him uh basically they can just bite or they can like find little odds and ends because they've been stealing weird technology they can kind of find odds and ends and it ends and attempt to like glue them together and like shove them together into a working like thing you know, there's, uh, I've got some, like, weird science, uh, tech that I have a table for, to pull from for that. Uh, but it'll do, like, zero to three harm, and it might not work very well. Uh, last but not least for this mystery is the Nano Fleas. Uh, they are the right hand to the Rat King. They, uh, back up him. They're meant to kind of cover his retreat. Uh, they can, they can kind of, like, mosquito swarm around a person and start sucking their blood and that has the stacking tag where it uh, adds one arm and then it adds one arm and then it adds ignore arm or uh you know over time uh the fleas are like unflinchingly loyal to the rat cake they love him because like he's basically using them as a symbiotic relationship you know uh or the the, the nano fleas enhanced by these nanites have a perfect voice for mimicry so they can like that's part of why like the rat king allows them to exist is he can use them in their in, in his illusions to kind of like give weight to like the person talking if he was to make a little hologram of me he would be able to use the nano fleas to give the, that little me a voice you know um to be a bystanders right and the bystanders are really fun we got Raymond Raygun Cummings, who is a helper, uh, he's a victim of a previous experiment by the scientist who's been shrunk down to get rid of, to have been gotten rid of, right? Specifically by the scientist to be like, no, 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 that guy disappeared. I was like paying him to be an intern and he just like, Foop. like I was paying him to be a lab assistant. I don't know where he went, right? But he's actually been shrunk because the experiment he was doing to Raymond went wrong. The experiment was meant to be a way to do like temporary off and on mind control, but it uh, it went horribly wrong. He permanently believe, likely permanently, fully believes that he is like a pulp fiction hero. Like you know the type of stuff we've been reading on paper cuts where it's like a guy with a sword invades a whole planet. That's what I'm picturing for this guy. He uh, he wants to defend Nottenberg from all the weird things coming in because he thinks he's the only person he can do. 
Um, then we got Claudia Arsenault, the skeptic. Uh, she is basically a HOA lady that was badgering the mad scientist to mow his lawn, look more presentable, and he was like, yeah, all right, lady. Uh, and just, he shrunk her. And so now she's being a incredibly annoying, overbearing HOA enforcer in Nottenburg, even though Nottenburg doesn't have an HOA. And so her role is the skeptic to deny the, deny the weird. Uh, she thinks that the Rat King is just the mayor covering up raids from another village. She thinks she's got this big boogeyman built up in her head of the sale, the traveling salesman. You know. Um, last but not least, for bystanders, we've got Robert Arthur, who is the mayor of Nottenburg. He is sick and tired of his city uh, getting attacked by all this weird stuff. And he wants to employ the party uh, to try and stop this. And he's like, he's he, he is a witness because he's got a bunch of different eyewitness accounts from all of his citizens, right? And then a couple locations, we've mentioned Nottenburg a couple times. It's like a little city that of people who have been variously shrunk by the scientist for, you know, various reasons. Basically, they annoyed him and he was like, well, now you're shrunk, get got. Or, oh no, you'll cause problems for me, uh, get shrunk. And so it's like a little town of people who are like, well, we're small, we need to live somewhere. Uh, the Rat's Warren is another location. Uh, last but not least for this mystery is, uh, the Beaker Sink. There's like a sink, probably like kind of... I'm not even gonna say it's like kind of nearby. Like, I think it's kind of on the, uh, on the like... You know, it's kind of not next to the steps but it's like a little ways i think it's along the same wall as the steps it's like a sink full of like weird beakers and concoctions and the scientist has not been doing his dishes and there's a bunch of weird stuff over there and it's all like biological experiments and it's like it, it could spit out anything at any time you know it could it could go very poorly very quickly um, that's also kind of the focus of the next mystery I have written here is primitive human nanotechnology. The concept being a sourdough starter that has been crispered into a ravenous, all-devouring goo. The party has to stop it. Uh, the hook is the party, like, you know, while going somewhere, runs into a guy who calls himself Baron bulwer Lighten. Well, Baron is in quotes. He's debatably a Baron, but his name's Bulwer Lighten. Well, his last name's Bulwer Lighten. A man who lost his leg to this goop and is now convinced that the goop, by sparing him, has granted him uh, a land holding as a sort of emissary for its wants and its needs. Once again, we'll skip the countdown because that kind of spoils broad strokes of the mystery. But uh, we have the main threat, which is this sourdough that is a phenomena, a biohazard. It starts out with 10 health, but the large, the longer it spreads and the larger it gets, the more health it gains. And it gains it very fast. It was originally designed to eat plastics and... What was the other one? Has a particular hunger for flesh and plastic because, like, the scientist thought was, well, I better teach this thing to eat plastic because we have a ton of plastic waste. And if I teach it to eat flesh waste like you know food that we can't eat well then it's just gonna naturally compost and then we're gonna have more of it to uh, we're gonna have this and then i can just bezout it with a ray or something and then we'll have a, uh, you know it's a yeast so it'll be vaguely edible or something was the thinking so this thing is ravenous it's sticky uh and it will eat anything. It was originally designed to eat plastic or flesh, so it will eat that first and fastest, but it'll eat anything. Uh, it also, as a sourdough starter does, produces a not unremarkable volume of CO2 gas while it's eating. So if you are locked in like a very small room with it, it could suffocate you. You know, you could slowly run out of air. And then the, uh, the other major, uh, the other major minions are kind of like a cult that has grown up around this thing. They think, oh, 
Well, it can eat anything, so it must it must know something we don't. Um, and like the Baron has the Baron Bulwer Light, and has kind of convinced people to follow and worship this thing. Uh, the Baron Bulwer Light is kind of a crazy old man. He loves the Blob. He's a cultist. He'll save his own skin at any cost. He's mostly just kind of a regular guy. He just feeds and maintains the blob it, it, the, in hopes of getting it to like him more. Uh, he is, like I said, he lost a leg to this thing and then like in his, de in his initial delirium has convinced himself that the thing not eating him all the way was a sign of respect. And he's just kind of like snapped. He's just lost it. Like, the, this, the trauma of losing its leg after having been shrunk was just too much for this guy. He's just, he's grasping with his hands at any, like, stability that he can find. Uh, we've got another couple of bystanders here. we got Marion Harmon, who is a victim. A uh, former door-to-door -door knife salesman who uh, tried to lure Blob away from the encampment with his fellow, where he lived with his fellow salesman. Uh, and he suggests that he will try and lure Blob away from Nottenburg. Uh, we've got Robert Arthur, once again, the mayor. The mayor thinks this is all gobbledygook. This is all nonsense. Uh, he thinks the Baron is just trying to, like, stir up the town and cause a panic. He thinks it's f he thinks he's full of it. Like, he thinks this just sounds like a C-list horror movie. You're, you're full of it. This isn't real. We've got a Stephen, one Stephen Peck, who is a gossip. He's confused and scared and a citizen of Nottenburg. Uh, he is, he's mostly prone to spinning tall tales of what this yeast can do, but it really can't. Uh, he's meant to kind of like throw red herrings at the players. Um, then we've got locations. We've got Glutenia, where the cult of the Carbo Loaders lives. Uh, the Beaker Sink again. And then we've got the Pickle Stash, which is a really interesting location. It's a maze made out of the scientist's, uh, you know, ex-wife. His, his ex-wife, he's divorced. His ex-wife used to love canning and pickling, so there's just like a giant maze of cans and jars and like stored food that like you just it's so easy to get lost in it's all like clear fun house walls um then we've already mentioned a little bit of the concept of the next one which is kind of like just the technology pile affecting people down here because like there's in addition to the beaker sink there's also a pile of failed experiments that he plans on using the pieces from and so the idea, this is a phenomena called an experiment. It's literally just like a big trove of weird science parts. And uh, it, it allows you to unlock a move called Rubbish Heap, which lets you essentially cobble together weird science stuff easier. Like you can find parts. Um, the big muscle on this one is uh, one Inez McCaffrey, who is a brute. Uh, it is a young girl who, uh, basically she got into, as a hook, she gets into a fight with Raymond, you know, remember Raymond from earlier, the pulp hero guy? She is sure that she is his nemesis, she's like the, the villain from his pulp book that he feels like he got sucked out of, right? She's so sure. Turns out, um, she's got the muscle to back it up. She can breathe fire, she can teleport, she can use telepathy. She is incredibly, like, absurdly strong for a girl of her size. Like, she can do, like, almost ant-level feats. It's crazy. Like, she could pick up, like, a whole boulder and just lob it at you. Um, we've got uh, Edgar Burroughs, who's a minion. Uh... He's the guy who discovered the pile of uh, weird tech parts, and he wants to uh, he wants to hide it from anyone he can't control, essentially. 
He's also the only person in setting who seems to be able to get guns to work stably at this size. Like, that's, that's another concept that I have for this setting, is that guns can work, but there's something about the shrinking process that makes them incredibly unstable. So, um, anyone who has a gun in their starting equipment, it now has the tag unstable. But maybe you can uh, wheedle out of Mr. Burroughs here how to uh, un like restabilize your firearms. This man's whole shtick is he's just the guy who found it, and he's the guy who knows how guns to get guns work. So he's just got four guns. That's his whole power. Is he's just a guy who has four different guns. Uh, last but not least for minions here is Michael Sands, the right hand. Uh, of a sort. He's the real bit brains behind the problems being caused by this uh, by this junk heap. He is the one putting together all this weird stuff that's causing all these weird problems. Uh, so he's got like he's got a freeze ray, he's got a disintegrator, he's got jet boots, he's got uh, he's got like net like cow chops that burst into like nets that like entangle you. He's got like he's got he constantly has access to the uh, junk heap move, like even when he's nowhere nearby. He's kind of a, like he's he's meant to be like the big bad that kind of like monologues almost. Uh, another another bystander we haven't met yet is Katrina Kit Peddler, who's a busybody. She's a girl from a weird science forum who showed up at the scientist's door after an internet argument. She's been trying to take the finished builds from Sa from Mike Sands and sell them throughout the basement. Uh, she's she's just kind of a meddler. Obviously, we see Raymond Cummings again, uh, Raygun Cummings. Uh, he's just you know he gets got in the hook. That's basically all he does. He's the victim. Uh, the HOA lady shows up again to call all this nonsense poppycock. Basically, she's like, "What? How could there be?" any way that any of this is happening uh she thinks little inez who you know absolutely uh like broke raymond's arm i want to stress like she just thinks inez is just goofing around and playing pretend uh and then marion Harmon, uh being one of the salesmen uh you know he knows a little bit of the ins and outs of the technology cult that kind of arose in as like a subculture in the traveling salesman camp, so to speak. So he kind of knows what's going on a little bit. Uh, and he, he also like calls out specifically Kit as like someone who might know what's going on because she's got the tech head for it. Um, once again, the Beaker Sink shows up. The salesman camp actually shows up as a location this time. Uh, and then the recycle bins, um, it's essentially, it's kind of a, the same sort of thing as a, of a maze as the jar, as like the food storage, but instead it's just the mounds and mounds of like recycling, like cans and, you know, cereal boxes and stuff that the scientist has not been taking out, so it's really easy to get lost in. But you never know, it's a place where rubbish lives, so there could be something important. And then we did, we did the dust bunnies uh, today, and then uh, I'm going to kind of change around the... Uh, what's the other one? I know I was going to do Sit Trust Me, bro. What was the other one I said? Is it going to be Pidge? Did I say I was going to do Pidge? I wrote it down. I wrote it down so I wouldn't forget. Um, let me check. Oh, yeah, we're gonna do Smunkies, which is one we wrote on stream here. Um, you know, I think it's just very appropriate to have giant, uh, giant brine shrimp be a problem. I think it's just gonna, I'm, I'm just gonna frame it a little differently because it's like, these are now just normal brine shrimp that act like this, and they're just big enough to be, like, they are larger than the average brine shrimp, but they're big enough to be a big problem. Like, instead of being, like, a small dog-sized brine shrimp, they're going to be, like, you know, a bear-sized brine shrimp. But I think that just kind of suits the setting really well. Then we've got one called Sit Trust Me Bro, which is... 
packed in here somewhere. I did it for a thrift store arc. For the thrift store arc originally, because there was like a lore reason that it made sense. Oh, the luck coin would be another good one to throw, actually. The luck coin kind of works in any setting, really. Uh, that's a really fun one. Ah, so trust me, bro. Uh, essentially, uh, people are developing scurvy way faster than they should. And so part of this is the mystery of, like, what's happening to these people? And then what do we do to stop this? It's basically like a virus that spreads and, like, causes... It, like, eats all the vitamin C out of your body so you experience scurvy really suddenly. And, like, I'm gonna have to change some of the details around, like... Uh, I'm gonna have to change, like, some of the... Some of the NPCs were designed for, uh, Aurum, the setting where I did that thrift store game, and I'm gonna have to, like, juggle them around to be the, uh, you know, small world NPCs, and I'm gonna have to, like, change some of the... change some of the locations. Uh, but the weaknesses will stay the same. Um, for example, because it's a virus, like, an antiviral medicine would slow it down but it it has a chance of becoming you know antiviral resistant as you're doing that so maybe don't do that uh and then also the thing that will actually kill this is or well it'll essentially like distract it and cause it to stop being a problem which is kind of the idea with the phenomena it doesn't die it just stops the main weakness is called tong it's a popular, well, like, formerly popular, I guess, uh, drink that was brought on a small space mission, which is what attracted the virus here. It craves it enough to leave its hosts. So, like, it essentially, like, it smells this ho it smells the tong with, uh, with its little viral nose, and it goes out of the people, and it, like, forms into a little, like, gross, sticky lump and, like, starts over to the tong. And so, like, when it's doing that, you can kind of just scoop it up and put it in a jar and it's... it will live there. So, like, that one I felt like was a really good one. Like, that's a really good one to throw in basically any setting. You know, any setting that, like, is contemporary to standard Monster of the Week. So I figured it would work really well. But now we got the Dust Bunnies, uh, and the Dust Bunnies kind of have a hook for Upstairs, which is nice. Um, so anyway, I'm going to call it there. Uh, I hope you really enjoyed this as much as I enjoyed this. Um, I'm really looking forward to running this game. Um, I'm actually going to pitch it in a, uh, in a Discord I'm in after a couple things get rolling. Um... Like, essentially, this Discord I'm in is trying to be, like, sort of a community for people who really enjoy tabletop games. And, uh, I'm gonna pitch this game, I'm gonna pitch this Monster of the Week game once, uh, once we've gotten a little steam behind that idea. Um, and I'm really looking forward to it, and if people in that server don't like it, I have a couple other tabletop servers I'm gonna pitch it in. Um... Which, if I do wind up pitching it in, uh, Ultier, uh, you're in a couple of the servers that I'm planning on pitching this in, so if you want to hop in on this, absolutely. I am extending a blanket invitation to you in particular right now, <laughs> before we've even started. So if this sounds fun, if this sounds fun to any of you, uh, come join my Discord. Remember, I have one of those? Uh, come join my Discord, and uh, maybe if we've got enough people who are really excited about this, it helps if I can spell. If we have enough people who are really, uh, really excited about this in my Discord, I'm happy to run it as, like, you know, a series of basically one-shots with whoever turns up. I'm down for that. Um, anyway, we're gonna be back on Friday, uh... Like I said, Paper Cuts is currently on a little bit of a season hiatus. Uh, we'll be seeing it soon, eventually. In the meanwhile, I'm going to actually try to uh, try to open up my stream, uh, my stream uh, layouts and try and polish them up 
or I'll work on like video assets. Essentially, Friday is going to become more of a like co-working stream where I'm talking, where I'm like talking to camera about like things I'm doing behind the scenes for paper cuts or like things that will kind of sort of tie into paper cuts in the sense of like, oh, I'm doing a book review. Here's this book review. It might just be me like ad-libbing a book review to camera some nights uh but friday nights are going to be much more casual than they normally are they're normally very like precise and specific so they're going to be a little more a little bit more casual these days uh i also might start streaming just randomly other days but i've got stuff that i feel like i want to do so keep one eye on your twitch notifications for that um I gotta come up with an outro for my Tuesday streams because I almost did the paper cuts outro and that's very much not what's going on here. Uh, have a great night, everybody. Uh, I will see you for sure Friday, potentially earlier than that. Let me...